On today's video, we're going to address a topic that is sometimes a bit of a stumbling block to getting your nursery started, and that is potting soil. Where do you get your potting soil? What is it made out of? How do you buy it in large quantities so it's not too expensive? And how do I know if this is the right potting soil to use to not kill my plants? Or how do I know which potting soil to use where my plants will actually thrive and grow in pots? These are questions that everybody's wanting to know who's starting a backyard nursery. And I wanna take our time on our video today to unravel some of the mystery behind potting soil. So stay tuned for the next few minutes and hopefully there'll be something here for you to learn about potting soil in a nursery environment. If you're new here on my channel, it's really good to see you. And if not, it's good to see y'all again. Either way, I'm tickled to have you joining in today. And if you would hit the like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to my channel, that would be awesome. It really helps me out, and it helps you to know when all of my new content comes out. One of the foundational elements to a nursery is your potting soil. You've got to get your potting soil situation figured out, and you've got to have a lot of it. You've got to have more potting soil than you think you're ever going to need because you're constantly using it to pot and to repot and you don't want that to be the limiting factor on why you can't have more plants than you have or why it's the reason you had plants that shriveled up and died in their pots because you needed to pot them up but you didn't have enough dirt and containers to do it you got to have a pile of potting soil ready all the time in your nursery if you need it today you need to have it ready to use today and part of the difficulty in doing that is securing the ingredients that you need to mix your own. My approach and my method for acquiring and having my potting soil is that I do mix my own and sure enough you can buy ready-made potting soil if you have a source near you and I would encourage you to look around and make phone calls and ask people is is there a place near you that sells bulk potting soil that they can deliver to your house maybe by the dump truck load the problem with that is many people like me can't handle an entire dump truck load of dirt in a small backyard nursery at once so it really depends on how much space you have and on what scale you're trying to do your nursery if you're just small like me and you don't spend but two or three or four hours a week messing with your nursery you don't need a whole dump truck load of potting soil but what about when you need a yard or two yards or three yards of potting soil. Well, almost anybody can handle a yard or two of potting soil. That's just a good sized compost pile worth of dirt. And I want to show you today how to go about getting that. Now, this is the far back side of my nursery and it's where I keep my mulch pile. And you can see it's pretty depleted. That's all the way down to ground level. And I've used so much of this mulch in potting up those arborvitas. And I only have, that's maybe three wheelbarrows full of mulch left there. And this mulch is the key ingredient in my potting soil. And when I say the key ingredient, what I really mean is the largest ingredient. It makes up the bulk of my potting soil. And it is simply a hardwood bark that's been double ground, which just means it's ground up rather finely. It's a double ground hardwood bark that serves as the basis for my potting soil mixture. Now, when you're making your own potting soil, there are countless videos on YouTube that will show you how to do this. Now, here's the good news about that. That tells you that there's more than one way to do it. And, and that's important to know because it's possible that the ingredients that I have available in my area are not available in your area. And the reality is when it comes to dealing with potting soil on a large scale, this is not going to be economical to ship typically. UPS is not going to be thrilled about bringing you a thousand pounds of potting soil to your house at any kind of price that makes any sense at all to have it shipped like you typically buy so many of the things that you purchase. So you need to find a way to locally source your materials for your potting soil. So there are two ingredients that I use for my potting soil mixture. Now if you come in and take a closer look here at this, this is from my mulch pile that I just showed you and this is the hardwood bark double ground hardwood bark. Now, when, it's, when I say double ground hardwood bark, I buy this at a local lumber mill, a sawmill, where they mill logs in to lumber. And this is just the hardwood bark, you know, hardwood, oak trees, maple trees, poplar trees, that kind of thing. They debark the trees and then they take it and grind it up into this product and it makes an excellent base for your potting soil. Now, if you can see that, that just looks like compost and that's basically all it is. 
and it's got a few um, you know little pieces of wood in it like this that are almost like splinters that are about this size and that's fine you don't want there to be too much of that in there i mean you don't want the bulk of it to contain that but this is a 100 percent um, organic product that is just shredded up again this is not wood mulch don't go buy the red and the black dyed mulch and stuff made that stuff's made out of ground up wood pallets and all kinds of things that you don't want in your potting mix but you need to think of this hardwood bark as something like compost or something like mushroom compost that's the purpose that this serves in your mix so your your bark mixture or your compost mixture this can be pure compost it doesn't have to be bark but it needs to have moisture retentive qualities about it so when i pot this when i put this into my pots and water them this product stays moist for quite a while you know through the day if i water them this morning they'll stay moist throughout the day so that's part one of the essential part of making your own potting mix is that you gotta have something in that mix that's going to retain moisture. The second product that you need to have in your mixture is something that will drain really well. Now I live in the southeastern United States and a product that is readily available in my part of the country is pine bark and I buy this locally at my box stores locally like I actually buy this at Lowe's. You can buy it at other box storage but it's a product that's called soil conditioner you can see it right here soil conditioner this is the only bag that i have left right now but this product is an absolutely awesome addition to your potting mix because it's made of finely ground pine bark now you can see these particles of pine bark i mean these things are ground up pretty fine also and you know some of the larger chunks in there are maybe the size of you know like an, an english pea or a black eyed pea or something like that with very little actual wood splinters mixed in there's a few but these are inconsequential and they don't make any difference whatsoever but what the pine bark does is causes your potting soil to drain excellently you never ever ever want your potting mix to be slushy or muddy or sticky so when you take a product like your compost or your hardwood bark and you mix it with your pine bark. Pine bark is for drainage. Hardwood bark is for, for moisture retention. When you mix these together, they make an excellent, excellent potting soil for nursery containers. And today I need to get a new load of hardwood bark because as you saw, I'm almost out. And when you purchase a load of hardwood bark, if you're able to get this product where you are, it needs to sit for a few weeks before you use it. it, it when you pick it up, it's going to be hot like compost and you can't put that on your plant. So you need to get you a pile of it and let it sit for say three or four weeks before you use it so it can cool down and stabilize before you're able to pot anything in it. So today, me and my son are going to take a trip down to our local sawmill, which is about 15, maybe 18 miles from here. And we are going to get a load of hardwood bark and bring it back to the house. So we've got plenty of potting soil in the months ahead. And here we are, got the mulch in the back of the truck there, as you can see, and me and John are about to take about a 15 mile drive home, and we'll get home and we'll get this unloaded. Let's go. All right, and now we're back home. Here's the load of mulch, and now we just gotta get this into the backyard. can see behind me we've unloaded about two yards of hardwood bark mulch that we're using for a primary ingredient in our potting soil with our pine bark that I showed you and listen don't worry about the exact ratios 
that you mix this with. It might be 50-50, it might be 40-60, it might be 70-30. Either way, don't worry about it. When you mix your potting soil up, just test it in a pot and see if it's draining well. When you water it, it doesn't need to pond on top of it. It should run through relatively fast or just pond for a second or two and it should, and it should go right through the pot and out the bottom of the pot pretty quick. And if your potting soil is doing that and it's a stable mixture, just meaning that it's not something like hot compost or something like that, then your plants are going to do just fine with a slow release fertilizer added to them. They'll have all the nutrients that they need. Don't worry about whether or not your plants are getting enough nutrients from this hardwood bark and pine bark. They're not, and that's okay. You're going to add a slow release fertilizer to them, and they will grow just fine. You've seen plants from all over my nursery. You've seen hostas, and you've seen arborvitas, and you've seen crepe myrtles and blackberries. All of my plants, they look great, and this is what they all grow in. Just understand that the mystery behind making your own potting soil is probably not as complicated as you think. Just remember, it has to drain well, and it has to retain moisture well. Well, thanks for watching today. This is Savvy Dirt Farmer. I hope all of you are having a great day. I love all of you, and I hope to see you next time.